a very good afternoon class 12th and class 11th too the topic that we are doing is common to both 11th and 12th it was introduced in class 11th the chapter is thermodynamics and the name of the topic is hess's law since it's a named law definitely it has its importance and it is regarding the enthalpy or the heat summation which means it is the addition of the heats involved now the statement for this law states that enthalpy change of a particular reaction remains same whether you do it in one step or you do it in multiple steps which means any particular reaction if it is done in a single step or in multiple steps the total amount of heat involved in the reaction remains the same if it's exothermic with let's say 100 kJ of energy released even if you do it in four steps the amount of energy released remains the same example is carbon reacts with oxygen to form co2 that's one reaction carbon complete combustion to give you co2 and the heat involved is minus 393 kJ per mole for reaction number 1 now the same <coughs> reaction number 1 can also be carried out by performing the reaction in two steps the first step is you add only half a mole of oxygen gas to give you carbon monoxide followed by another half a mole of oxygen gas to give you carbon dioxide so whether you do it in one step by taking full one mole of oxygen you get this heat or you may do it in two steps half a mole and then another half a mole which mean you will do it in two steps when you do it in two steps the amount of heat evolved is these two as you can clearly see your heat evolved in one is equal to the sum of heat evolved in 2 and 3 if i add these two up i get the same amount of heat which is 393 is equal to 110 minus plus minus 283 which clearly indicates that the total heat of a reaction whether done in one step or done in two steps remains the same now to understand this concept first the application of this process is that is if you have certain slow reactions so you can use this method to calculate the heat for slow reactions or also for the reactions which actually do not take place experimentally but there are other multiple steps by which you can calculate the heat so the reactions which are not possible experimentally you are in a position to find its enthalpy by the set of different reactions and also for the slow reactions we now we doing the numericals for this particular topic you are watching the channel by seema makijani trying to make chemistry easier for you we are doing the numericals of thermodynamics chapter the first numerical that i am taking is you have to calculate enthalpy of this particular reaction so this is your target equation which is also provided to you in the question you are given a set of three reactions which you can use for each of these reactions the delta hr means for each of these reactions the enthalpies of the reactions are provided to you and you have to use these three reactions to achieve the heat of the given reaction so the steps that are involved in this process would be i require carbon on this side out of these three reactions i have equation 1 having carbon on this side so the steps is that is your equation 1 you take it as it is you require carbon you require two times hydrogen now where do you have hydrogen in these three reactions this is it but this is just once you want it twice on the same side so to this you would add 2 into the equation number 2 i'll multiply equation number 2 into 2 so that i get twice of h2 moving on to the third thing that i require is methane methane i can see it is available only in this reaction and it is at the very side that i want i want the methane as a product and it is on the product side so i would add equation number and your answer for heats would come out on the aspect of this that is is with respect to heats your answer would be minus 393 plus 2 into minus 285 plus 890 is your answer for the question if you add these three up you would get your result fine now moving on to the further steps and the values if you calculate these three and your answer would come out to be minus 74.8 kJ per mole you can verify that now if you are asked to show the steps which is normally done so these three steps would be illustrated like this your equation 1 is c plus o2 
gives CO2. Step 2 is multiply equation 2 by 2 that means twice of H2 plus if I multiply this by 2 it will be O2 multiply this by 2 you would get 2H2. Coming to the third equation is as it is that means you have CO2 you have twice H2O and you have methane as the product and two molecules of oxygen as the product. Now if I want to write the net reaction just check what can you cancel. You have a CO2 here and a CO2 here this gets cancelled. You have a oxygen you have two oxygens here and you have two moles oxygen here also. You have two H2 here so you have two H2 here. So everything else gets removed other than you have carbon, you have 2 H2 and you have a methane. As you can see your equation has been achieved and if you add up the heat values your answer is this. This is how you are supposed to do. You are first supposed to give the steps involved in the reaction then you have to show the steps cancel out the unwanted reagents which are common on both the sides and you get your end result which matches with your target equation to get you the answer. We will do another question on this. Moving on to the second question. The second question says calculate the standard enthalpy of formation of methanol using the data given. Which means the target equation is not given to you. The equation that you require is for the enthalpy of formation of methanol. So your target reaction becomes this is methanol and you have to prepare this the equation of formation from its constituent elements. So the constituent elements are carbon, you have twice H2 because you have four of hydrogens and you have half O2 because you have a single oxygen. Now this is the target equation which you have to achieve from the given three equations. Let us talk about the steps involved. I require a carbon. Carbon I would get from this equation. So it is equation number 2. I require hydrogen twice. Hydrogen is available only in this reaction. Therefore I add 2 into your equation number 3. So I get the hydrogens also twice. Now let us talk about oxygen. You only require half a mole of oxygen and you can see you have oxygen here, here as well as here. If you have a identity required and it is available in all the reactions please do not think about it forget it this would on its own be there when you are done with the other identities carbon i have included from equation number two two hydrogen i have included from equation number three oxygen i will not bother because it is available in all the reactions i am left with methanol methanol is only available in the first reaction that too on the reactant side i require it on the product side so i need to reverse equation number 1. These are the steps involved and if I talk about the heats that I would get the answer as the answer would be equation number 2 as it is. So you have minus 393 plus you have equation number 3 into 2 that is twice of minus 286 and then you have a reverse of equation 1 that makes it positive 726. When you reverse the equation the sign changes to positive you can refer to my lecture on thermochemical equation to get clarity on this particular topic. From this you can do the mathematics and get your answer as far as the value of heat is concerned. Now I would be applying the steps onto these three reactions to get the target equation. So your equation number 2 is as it is. So carbon plus oxygen gives CO2 that is equation number 2. Your equation number 3 is to be multiplied by 2. So you have twice H2 plus O2 gives twice H2O. Equation number 3 is to be reversed. Let me reverse the equation number 3. I get CO2 plus twice H2O gives me methanol plus 3 by 2 O2. Now let us see which are the reagents that you can cancel out which are common to both the sides. Let us begin. Let us begin with CO2. CO2 gets cancelled from here and here. Your 2H2O also gets cancelled from here and here. Now coming to oxygens, you have 2 moles here and you have 1 and a half here. So you can cancel this 1 and a half, cancel these 2 and you are left with half O2. 
Have I made myself clear? Because you are cancelling one and a half and two, so you are left with half O2. You are left with carbon. You are left with 2H2 from the second equation. This is left, this is left. And your resultant that is methanol is left. So, you have achieved your target equation. And the answer of mathematics would be from here. So, this is how you apply the Hess's law for your numericals. We will do another numerical now. The next question says, Calculate enthalpy of combustion for glucose from the given three equations. This is equation number 1, this is equation number 2 and this is equation number 3. So, first of all, you require a target equation. The target equation is for combustion of glucose. So, your target equation becomes C6, H12, O6 should be one mole. You have oxygen from the air and the product are CO2 plus H2. Now, let us balance this equation for the enthalpy of combustion. Now, since it is enthalpy of combustion, this would remain one mole. You have 6 carbon, so I make it 6. I have 12 hydrogens, so I make it 6. Now, let us balance the oxygens. I have 12 and 6, 18 oxygens here. Out of these 18 oxygens that I have here, I have already got 6. So, I am left with 12 more. So, this becomes my target equation. Now, what are the steps involved? Let us talk about the steps involved. I need one glucose molecule on the reactant side. The glucose is here. That means I would reverse equation 3 to get glucose. Done. I require oxygen 6, but I will not bother about oxygen because oxygen is available in all the three reactions. Hence, please do not think about oxygen. Coming to carbon dioxide, you need 6 molecules of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is only available in the first reaction. You require it as a product. It is on the product side. So, you need to add equation 1 multiplied by 6 so that you get 6 carbon dioxides. You require 6 water molecules. Water molecules are only available in equation number 2. On the right side, you want it on the right side only. So, you add equation number 2 also multiplied by 6. Six. Now, let us talk about the answer. The answer is going to be reversing equation 3. So, plus 1169.8 multiplying equation 1 by 6. So, multiplying 6 into 395 a minus sign here and multiplying equation 2 also by 6. That means 6 into minus 269.4. When you solve all this is your answer to the heat of this particular reaction. Now, when we talk about the steps, let us do these steps. Reversing equation 1. So, I will reverse this equation. C6, H12O6, 6 carbons plus 6 hydrogens plus oxygen. That is first step. Multiplying equation 1 by 6. So, 6 carbons plus 6 oxygens gives me 6 CO2. Multiplying the equation number 2 also by 6. So, you have 6 H2 plus you have 3 O2 to give you 6 H2. Now, from these 3 equations, you can now add these 3 to see whether you achieve your net equation or not. Now, let us check. In your net equation, you have 6 carbons gets cancelled, 6 hydrogens gets cancelled. You have how many here? How many oxygens do you have here? Just check. Ha, huh, there is an error in the question. This should have a, had a 3 here. Only then will you end up in this. There is an error in the question. You please make it in 3 here. Now, if this is 3, that means your this value on reversing this equation would also be a 3. Now, let us cancel it out. You have 6 and 3, 9 oxygens on this side and you have 3 oxygens here. I cancel the 3. I am left with 9 instead of 9 oxygens here. I am left with 3 oxygens only. Now, let us see what are we left with. You are left with a glucose molecule. You are left with 6 oxygen molecules. And you end up in 6 CO2 plus 6 water. Now, please check whether the achieved equation matches with your target equation or not. And it does. If there is an error, that means as we just identified, there could be an error in the question which I had 
pinpoint it to you. Otherwise, the steps do achieve the final reaction. You will never bother about one of the reactants which is available in all the equations. It will automatically be achieved. Is that okay? Moving on to the last question. Calculate enthalpy of the reaction this. So thankfully, you have a target equation with you. Also find the bond enthalpy of CCL bond. You are wanting to find the bond enthalpy of CCL. Now there are four CCL bonds. If you can get the energy of this reaction, you divide that energy by four because this reaction involves the cleavage of four bonds and you want it per mole. So after you get the energy of this particular equation, you will divide it by four to get this second half. Unfortunately, the reactions are also not given to you which means the first step would be to transform this data into chemical reactions. Let's move ahead. Enthalpy of vaporization of CCL4. CCL4 is liquid and vaporization means CCL4 you have transformed it into gas. This is your equation 1. The second equation is enthalpy of formation of CCL4. That means you require CCL4 liquid is formed from its constituent elements that is carbon plus chlorine gas twice. Coming to the third is enthalpy of atomization of carbon. Enthalpy of atomization means your carbon solid would change into carbon gas. Coming to the last enthalpy of atomization of Cl2. That means your Cl2 gas breaks down to give you 2 Cl gas is the enthalpy of atomization. Now this has to be understood Please pay attention, stop the video for a minute and understand what has been done to achieve your equations from the data. Once you have understood this, now we need to do the steps. Alright, so the steps involved would be, you require CCL4 gas. So this would come on the left hand side. So you will reverse equation 1, that is step number 1, so that you get your CCL4 gas on this side. Next you require is carbon gas on the product side. Your carbon gas is here. So you add equation number 3. So you get your carbon gas also. You want 4 Cl gases and 4 Cl gases can be achieved from this. That means you multiply 2 into equation number 4. So this is also achieved. Now unfortunately you have not used your equation number 2. Now where this you have got, this you have got, this you have got. But out of these, where will you use equation number 2 is to be thought. So first we will do these 3 steps. Let us perform these 3 steps. Reversing equation 1, I get CCL4 gas gives me CCL4 liquid. Equation number 3 I need to add, that is C solid gives me C gas. Equation number 4, I multiplied by 2, I get twice CL2 gas gives me 4 Cl gas. Now if I take this equation and I want to add it, you can clearly see what is it that you can delete. In fact, you cannot delete anything. There is nothing common to both the sides which means you are not achieving your target equation. So let us write this down. CCl4 gas plus C solid plus twice Cl2 gas gives me CCl4 liquid plus carbon gas plus 4 Cl gas. As you can see, there is nothing deleted. That is where your equation number 2 plays its role. Now what you need to do is, you do, what do you want? You, in your target equation, you are ready with this, you are ready with this, you are ready with this. But these things you do not want. These things need to be removed. So you would use your second equation for this. That is, you need another step here is that you add your second equation after reversing it. So here I am adding another step is you reverse equation number 2 and now I would be doing it. I will be reversing equation number 2. I get CCL4 liquid gives me C solid plus 2 Cl2 gas on reversing equation number 2. Now if you add it up, this gets cancelled your carbon solid gets cancelled, your Cl2 gets cancelled and you are ending up in your target equation which is C 
CCL4 gas gives you C gas plus 4 Cl gas that was your target equation which has now been achieved so your answer would involve these four steps let's apply these four steps here to get your answer now to obtain your answer you will require to do these four steps let's do it on this small box so that it can be relevant e reversing equation number one so you have minus 30.5 Adding equation number 3, so you have plus 715. Adding equation number 4 into 2, that means you have plus 2 into 242. And then you have reverse of equation number 2, that means you have a plus 135.5. These values will give you the answer for your target equation and the answer that you get from all these values would be in the range of above 1000 something just add them up you will get the value to be this value comes out to be 1304 kilojoules per mole is the value for this particular answer but you were also asked to find out the bond enthalpy of ccl bond so your answer here would be 1304 divided by 4 because you are breaking four such bonds to get the energy so your answer for this bond enthalpy would be 326 kilojoules per mole is your answer. I hope it's clear. This is one of the tougher numericals from NCRT of the unit thermodynamics. With this, I close the class on Hess's law. I hope you are understanding it and are able to solve the questions by applying the steps followed by the stepwise accumulation to get your target equation and the mathematics involved. Thanks a ton. Do well in your life. Please like, subscribe and share the videos. Bless you loads. Bye.